Welcome guys to another episode of the North American Online League Reviews. Uh, this time we are very uh, fortunate to have all these um, rankings in front of all of our player names. Anyways, here is us. Let's take a look. Okay. All right, uh, let's get started. Uh, first game, we have two 3Q players. Uh, welcome, guys. Um, very reasonable from the early game um, up to now. You cannot distinguish between any uh, Q player, uh, between any of these two Q players and any professionals. Um, they would all play about the same kinds of moves, uh, which is great. Um, this is a very high level of play. and. Um, Today uh, we're going to concentrate on how to apply early game um, ideas into the middle and later game. So the first thing and the most important thing we want to remember is that the early game concepts, the Joseki concepts, uh, will apply more to the late game and the middle game, and then applying them to our games will yield um, much, much greater impact to our game. So um, if we mess up a Joseki, we might lose four or five points. We mess up a middle game, we might lose um, 10, 15 points. So that's what we mean. Okay, so first thing is uh, the need to maintain sentence and um, the uh, need to tr track sentence. So first, um, Right now, this turn by white is a sente move if black's corner is very unsafe. Um, just uh, this would be a co, and if white extends, this would be a um, probably a dead group. Um, you guys can fill in the details, but um, uh, something like this is going to be very, very severe. So this turn by white is sente, and this move is very, very big. Uh, therefore, black really needs to play an extra crawling move and then play somewhere else enough so that you make this turn uh, not sente. So um, this is an early game concept. Um, before we can tanuki and um, go um, elsewhere in the Josekis, we have to make sure that the opponent doesn't have a very big move, very important move that is sente because getting some move in sente is getting some move for free. And we never want that. So um, as we head into the middle game, um, um, let's be on the lookout for sente big moves that we have to um, try to uh, fight over. These moves are extremely big. OK, so in the game, black did finally end up getting the S7 crawling move in sente. So that's good. The flip side of these sente moves is, of course, gote moves. And so um, this, uh, this, this black move here is an example of a gote move. Uh, why is it gote? It is not threatening white in, um, with a very threatening manner. And it's only because white is relatively strong. After the S8 turn stone, uh, white has um, is not afraid of any attacks, basically. Um, and this Hane Connect is another one of those um, Sente moves, which white probably wants to get as early as possible. This would also have the effect of further strengthening the south side white group. So um, Sente moves are very, very good. Uh, Sente moves that gain a lot of points that have a lot of point value is very, very good, uh, any kinds of value. So we want to grab those right away. And conversely, these kinds of gote moves that do not um, threaten the opponent too much, um, we do not want to play. And on the other hand, if your opponent plays a non-threatening move, if you judge them to be not very threatening, you definitely do not want to answer in this manner. Um, so this would make the N7 move that Black played a Sente move, which is uh, fairly good. Okay, um, So keep track of where you are relatively strong. For example, White is pr 
probably pretty strong on the right hand side on the bottom may be lacking a little so when you fix fix your bottom side don't fix the middle cut okay all right so um fighting happened here and here again um, um, apply early game concepts to the middle game and the most important concept is get the sente moves and then do not play the gote moves okay so here black does a very good job because these two moves are taking out white territory on the bottom and we're doing this in sente next we are capturing the two white stones okay uh, so um, so the following moves have been played and uh, here is another uh, application of our idea so here white captures in, this is gote this does not affect black in any way in any um, severe way so instead white wants to play the satari which theoretically it is sente because black likely captures and you accomplish the same thing in sente um, if black tanukis anyways then this move is just better than the capture because we can capture another black stone so uh, try to do things in sente try to um, you know try to have sente whenever possible this is um, this does apply in the early game and of course this will apply infinitely or multiple multiple um, in a multiplicative way uh, more in the middle and later game as we can see here black has um, accomplished a major success in this bottom fight and mostly because white played very very safe now another different concept is playing slow and playing safe may not actually get you uh, safety like playing this tiger's mouse for white here clearly a very very conservative safe move um, protecting this cut but um, the result is black was able to play fast and then on the bottom here where white um, did not have a uh, very strong shape here black made tremendous gains and here white plays slow one more time and then black is able to score major victories here um, playing playing conservatively is not necessarily safe um, therefore having sente is very very important and very sought after in uh, in the higher levels of play uh, get sente so you can defend your weak areas that's on the rest of the board get sente so you can get some big areas rest of the board get sente so you can start attacking on the rest of the board okay um, okay the game continues and here is um, a, an exchange white is surrounding the right hand side black is surrounding the left hand side um, both sides are um, um, both sides are have um, come to a consensus have come to an agreement have come to peace basically um, however noticeably um, it seems blacks territory is a bit bigger than whites um, it's not totally clear both sides are pretty big but if you um, you know I've played a lot so I know it, it seems very clear to me if it's not take a moment to estimate and then um, and then decide here clearly white has took a moment to estimate and came to the conclusion I, I can't let this black group um, you know get totally surrounded or where this territory get totally surrounded um, here probably locally the best move is here again um, when you're fixing anything uh, fix the weak part of your um, the weakest part of your positions um, uh, moyos are a very good example of this in fact if you have thickness somewhere you do not want to spend moves to um, to over concentrate yourself there okay um, very reasonable move so here black is showing some um, very very good um, attacking um, principles here it's putting pressure on one side um, and strengthening yourself at the same time is very good is a very good way of attacking 
So here black is pressure in the corner, uh, while strengthening the three um, original black stones on the side, and as a result, black is attacking white uh, very, very severely. Um, here is a case where black is adding to a fairly strong corner already, so we probably don't want to do that. Play here. Uh, if you uh, are okay with it, play here. Um, allow white to uh, try to get into this area where black is very, very strong. White is not going to get anywhere. Of course, um, Tanuki altogether is also good. Okay, so here uh, black, um, <coughs> uh, um, black does make an exchange which allows white to have a more complicated position. Um, um, at least there's a lot, lots of different cuts now. And uh, in the game, black decides to play conservatively in the middle and white almost has two eyes. Not quite. Perhaps white wants to uh, play this press first. You know, black might block you. Um, anyways, um, e so here we see a very good, um, a, a case of very, very good offense. Um, very, very good offense is um, securing your uh, weaknesses or relative weaknesses while you are attacking and then your opponent has no more exchanges against your thickness. Okay, so um, perfectly reasonable. And here, um, when white threatened to break into black's Moyo territory, black correctly identified the bottom is a relatively strong location and then simply allowed white to, um, to do whatever white wanted uh, without the ability to make two eyes. And this is um, big gains by black here. Um, no second eye for white, and white um, throws in the towel. Um, very, very good game by black in this game, and we see uh, uh, many of the um, many applications of the one uh, very important opening principle, which is um, uh, which is sentai matters extremely big, and you definitely want to get Sente beyond the early game. Um, so in, during the middle game here, uh, White played two crucial um, slow moves, um, inefficient moves to start the middle game fighting, uh, protecting the cut here, and then capturing the stone here. Uh, this allowed Black to set up a very um, nice uh, big Moyo. White evaded. The Moyo was too strong to be um, um, you know, to be destroyed, and um, the attempt was pretty nice by White, but uh, just uh, not uh, not enough. Good importance of keeping sente. Next, uh, let's go on to game two. Um, this one is a one dan versus a three q player. Let's see. Okay, again, a very, very high quality early games by both sides right now. Um, this is jo this is Joseki, I believe. Joseki has white playing here or here. Um, not a major difference though. Uh, black plays a very thick and solid move in, with a jump. You may want to play another pincer, which is faster, um, but. Um, this is very thick, this is very uh, reasonable. Okay, white uh, place in this corner. Um, okay, and here we're beginning to see the um, early game transition into the later games. So here, um, here is the first major fight of the game, and white has picked a very, um, very strong location for black to start the fight, um, which is not advisable, right? Um, we probably want to start the fight in, in a relatively weaker part of Black's positions, for example, on the upper side. Here, um, after Black played O15, this top corner is, um, is quite a point of strength, which is why um, White is going to likely struggle from here on. Okay. Um, yeah, this is, another, uh, this is also the same idea as um, the previous game. Um, how to best attack, you make your weakest surrounding stones stronger, and this move is settling the two jump, um, 
the two stones here with a jump and um, also attacking white's corner this just creates added problems for white um, uh, this is very good uh, obviously very good um, go playing and in the middle game here um, you know it corresponds to a lot of these great uh, early game Josekis that we sort of we understand best so remember uh, we are trying to apply what we understand best and uh, apply that into areas where we don't understand as well and um, because the principles uh, should be um, you know continuous or they, it should apply both ways um, okay so let's let's keep let's keep uh, looking at it attack now black attacks the white group be, um, and with this right hand side black group having gotten stronger this attack is all the more stronger as well I can think of a very nice um, um, attacking offensive move like this sequence and after this sequence uh, white is gonna have find it very difficult to make two eyes um, yeah that, that that's a very strong sequence this is a very similar sequence it's um, it does however allow white a um, escape pass um, okay okay uh, some exchanges and white does go for the escape um, okay uh, white makes some cutting points in black's shape and um, this is how white uh, is taking care of this group it makes perfect sense uh, however the attack continues uh, white takes a moment to play here which um, this is 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 applying a very good principle to the defense uh, on the defensive uh, if you can make problems with your opponent's shape this is very um, very good um, okay all right so an exchange is had black has captured the one stone on the top made the right hand side alive white has also made his group relatively safe as well and next with the newfound strength white invades and attacks um, this is very very good um, this is very very good okay um, this is not only taking a very large area uh, it's a lot of territory uh, it's a lot of territory that white destroys uh, this is also a lot of um, this is also very likely to be sente uh, because um, black's group is not totally alive okay um, okay some more exchanges and expect white to surround black on the outside right now okay uh, these moves make a lot of sense um, Okay, and here is the first, uh, you know, black is not alive on the inside, but black is greedy and takes the ponuki. Um, okay, let's see who wins uh, the this uh, liberty fight. Okay, uh, here white goes for a, um, black is alive, um, nothing white can do about this black group. Uh, however, white um, may be able to um, win the capturing race against the um, uh, against the uh, inside black group. Um, so suppose something like this happened. Uh, this is a seki, but um, if white could have one more liberty by trying to break out m or maybe make an eye, maybe white can do it. However, white ends up in a very decisive um okay white um white um, messes around and then uh, in the nick of time comes back to the most important fight which is the bottom um and this one um this one is gonna be um okay black answered so so it's all good we come back to the bottom fight uh, crucially here uh, white gives up one liberty with this honey and um Okay, and here white gives up on this group, and uh, that that's going to be a major loss for white overall in the game. Um, all right, um, you know, a, a better way to go might be um, you know, maybe we have to capture this. This is probably going to be a seki, 
um, and then white you know making this uh, right hand side alive maybe white can go on um, but as such um, um, black has a huge advantage and um, um, okay uh, so uh, what happened here let's dissect this a little bit um, so black went for greed and um, black did get this counter-attack which is very nice and as a result um, perhaps white can get sente with this capture when black threatens the three stones here perhaps white can um, connect um, just um, you know capturing three stones will not be too wise for black and so um, here um, white connected here um, probably if white captured um, this is a backdoor on the first line connecting from the side to the corner and um, you know this is a crucial moment of the game where white lost uh, lost the sente so remember back to the previous game um, sente is one of the most important things that a go player can uh, can have and um, it is constantly being fought over and uh, just um, this game is a great illustration of um, if it's the early game you play a um, conservative move um, it's still worth a lot in the middle game if you lose your sentence you know a an alive group becomes dead and then uh, white has to live on the re remaining group and loses another sente meanwhile black has this entire outside surrounded um, so value of losing sente extremely extremely um, uh, important uh, here again uh, black would like to keep sente by keeping the attack going against the two white stones here uh, this way um, by keeping sente you can make a lot more um, playing here um, this allows white to survive on the left hand side and um, as a result you know um, black has much much less so always try to get sente important early game concept to um, take into the middle game um, speaking of trying to get sente here this honey by black is extremely nice for getting sente um, the threat is white pushes and then cuts um, against uh, the black shape if black wants to um, try to try to hold on in this position um, there's uh, maybe but then there's a lot of big big risks on the outside uh, black only has one eye on the inside for example so uh, black honeys and then um, I, you know normally white has to block and now this there's no more pushes so this is a great way to uh, gain sente here um, so in this game um, white has messed up in two to three locations losing two to three sente moves and as a result um, as you guys can see in the middle game uh, big big differences can result okay um, here uh, white does a very good job of fighting in the middle white survives and captures a few black stones good job however um, um, and and white survives on the bottom group in sente as well so extra good news for white however um, um, because of the earlier um, a couple of um, gote moves earlier um, there is uh, you know white is still behind by a lot despite um, fighting relatively well um, yeah uh, this game a very good illustration of um, winning the fight by uh, or losing the fight by losing sente um, here even though white um, did fight pretty well in the second half of the game um, the earlier half was just uh, way too much to um, to come back from um, okay um, we have come to the third game okay remember um, um, the the early game Joseki's ideas behind Joseki's are some of the uh, concepts that we go players know the best um, and all these are applicable throughout the game um, the important thing for us to take away is try to take away from the concepts of the early game uh, 
as of the geosecchies of the um, like direction of play trying to get sente uh, everything like this and take it into the middle game and into the late game um, um, one uh, it is uh, often more palpable you can feel the effect much more clearly and secondly the actual effect themselves are also greater in magnitude um, the early game um, matters for five points the later game matters for 30 points uh, and the last game showed a very good example of this so right now um, most players know many many josekis now um, and we have em emulated a lot of ai josekis we're able to play the first 20 30 moves at um, professional level at very very high levels but um, um, you know later in the game is where we start to struggle and um, the way to um, help us um, the way to help us is to um, you know try to apply the same concept the same um, observations of the early game into the later half of the game um, and they're not very difficult applications they're very simple ideas like I, I want to try to get sente all the time I want more territory rather than less I want more thickness rather than less take care of the groups and try to do everything in sente okay so let's take a look at uh, this third game um, Hane Atari okay another Joseki here um, by the way um, this Joseki is a great one to illustrate what we mean by um, the early game um, so this Joseki was uh, preferred by white um, before AIs nowadays it's um, slightly it's considered slightly good for black uh, and that's a realization that mostly comes from the realization that uh, one the RG is very clean for black for white there's more end game um, uh, corner RG um, secondly black has sente right so imagine if you can if you have a similar situation where you can uh, you're you're um, you're under attack and then uh, you can settle with your group you give up a stone or two in the middle and later game um, this is a great um, uh, example joseki to take uh, to take some of these ideas in the early game and apply them later on in the game all right okay uh, all right the another very important concept of the early game is the idea of exchanges and then uh, trying to have your moves accomplish more than the opponent's moves so here um, this atari and this connect and this connect um, are two exchanges we have just played two and uh, we can um, we can see what white has gained white has gained some control over these bottom intersections uh, but where w how much has black gained um, how much control or influence has black gained black has gained a lot of control over the you know a much greater space than white and this is a classic inside and outside exchange um, the the general idea is that by having the outside the amount of influence that one gets is much much greater than having the move on the inside influence here means reach over the entire board um, effect across the entire board so here um, try to play your moves on the outside all else being equal makes sense um, and that is just a very you know in, on, in many josekis there's like the inside group outside group um, territory side outside influence side and um, um, yeah all else being equal try to play your moves on the outside versus your opponent of course the key here is all else being equal um, and here is a good case um, here um, so so the extra amount that white is surrounding in terms of potential territory is here um, at the same time for black um, <coughs> it's about the same and on the other hand the amount of influence or effect over the rest of the board black gets a lot more so these two exchanges will severely favor black 
um, just remember uh, when in doubt keep uh, when all else is equal try to affect the rest of the board more rather than less of course um, usually this is at the expense of territory so uh, when you guys do have a choice make sure um, you know when the territory is about the same make sure you um, choose um, you know the outside okay big complicated fight happens here and this double honey um, um, this will expose black to uh, to the following double Atari here's another one um, here's another important concept we can apply early on in the early game and apply that to the middle game here is a middle game fight and um, early in the game all the Josekis um, will involve um, a fair amount of reading material and um, um, so a very important concept in almost all Josekis is that you don't want to make any wasted moves so pretend uh, that we haven't played here suppose we played the crawling move white with Atari and then capture the one stone white might capture it like this but white would do these moves and so if if black places double honey um, letting white get the double Atari here and capturing one stone um, suppose white captures here the effect of this one s18 stone for black is almost negligible because it is gonna perish on the inside um, so here is um, even though uh, black is trying to uh, fight here and black you know generally has um, half of the outside right uh, here black has a corner black has more um, outside reach on the bottom side of the joseki on the top side uh, white has more reach um, um, even though black has played a surrounding move this move ends up being totally on the inside and very very useless this is probably just a simple uh, misread by black um, so another um, um, on, along the same veins uh, white probably does not want to Atari here also giving up an uh, outside stone and also allowing black to play this move which is on the outside of white's corner and as the game showed it forced white to uh, spend another move on the inside and, and, and now black even has the chance to capture white by playing this um, honey now black has to take care of black's group on the outside first but um, you can imagine that um, you know you know um, even though the initial um, exchange is white on the outside black on the inside but the follow-ups are um, are all black being on the outside and in sente and taking away white's ice space so here is the flip side of you prefer to be on the outside versus the inside all else being equal uh, remember the all else being equal is very very um, is a very very important condition and uh, pre, um, you know do address uh, this okay um, in this game though um, it seems like black um, was tunnel visioned on trying to capture white and neglected um, black's own uh, liberties so as a result black um, hunted and then white played on the outside and captured black uh, black would ha would not have uh, enough um, liberties and the game ended here black um, resigned um, now of course I wouldn't have resigned and I wonder how this game is uh, according to AI at this point um, by the way OGS score estimate estimate score on the right hand side this is Katago's estimate of the current state of the game right now indeed black died for sure um, black died for free white is up 25 now what is it at this point white plus 12 okay what is what was it at this point what, this was a very very even game at this point so um, as you guys can see uh, just a couple moves um, 
a couple of mistakes by white by by black and then white is able to make a 25 point um, swing in the um, game result um, and then that also made black resign so um, a very very um, you know applying you know being careful and playing the middle game well has um, never been this important okay we have a bit of uh, just a question about this um yeah would yeah. there have been an easier way for me to take the outside um i don't actually know this joseki and i think me playing 016 was a mistake here right um, correct so i descended mm. to um p18 because i wanted to give up corner and take the outside mm. is there an elegant way for me to do that or was it a little bit too wishful yes yes uh, the block at p18 is a legitimate good move the joseki the next joseki is o18 to turn um, and then uh, the joseki is white ataris and then captures the corner so this way um this way after all of this black is gonna be able to atari here and um, this will attack the two white stones and if white connects um you know, tries to move out with the two stones, um, black will have an uh, okay time taking care of both sides. So uh, this turn is a very common uh, shape move. Uh, defini definitely uh, learn it. And um, this turn is uh, saving the uh, possibility of making the Atari on the force line and forcing white into a relatively uh, bad shape. So. Uh, if white extends, crawl one more time, and then crawl one more time, and then I believe uh, black will have a chance to capture the corner. Uh, just, just, um, just a normal move would be four liberties against five liberties. Um, and um, before we uh, before we play these moves, we can make this Atari, and now, um, you know, now black would not only keep the corner but also uh, keep the attack going on the outside um, oh, this is yeah, thank you very yeah, much yeah yeah uh, this is a very difficult move to come up with if we don't know the joseki right um, so um, you know again today is about how to come up with um, you know how to take the early game joseki ideas into the middle and later game so if we don't know the joseki it's a great application of our you know our you know using our other joseki knowledge to try to uh, sort of um, you know make it up on the fly and uh, needless to say um, most go players don't know all josekis so this is very very um, this can be very very helpful to be able to come up with reasonably strong uh, and good moves um, so um, here there is one um, helping um, this is one way to help us come up with good moves and that is uh, in the in most Josekis a very heavy uh, a very important idea is all about the relative strengths um, your move should should not only make your own group strong but it should also make your opponent weak and vice versa so the first Joseki of the game we saw here um, had uh, many examples of this so black is going into the corner, taking white's corner away. Um, um, uh, so black is making a base and taking away white's space. So this makes white play the extending move. This one makes territory for white and takes away territory from black. Um, and so the, not only is this very big um, territorially, it's also very big in the thickness aspect. Um, for ex so black now uh, plays another move here in this game in this uh, joseki um, so two josekis um, ex uh, jump is fine another one that's a very good illustration of the relative strength concept is this um, press this press is a great move because um, it is expanding black and also doing the most um, you know the, the the most aggressive thing possible against white um, so, um, okay, so when we face a um, unknown Joseki, um, and of course any fight in the middle game, 
um, when we face any of these unknowns it's very helpful to remember uh, to go look for the relative strengths uh, moves uh, moves that help yourself um, reach um, safety and moves that also attack your opponent at the same time those will generally be um, you know very good moves so here on the upper side we have reached this position and we did want to block because we wanted the outside and uh, here when white cut um, um, it is a very good time to uh, to take that concept here uh, what's a good move that will strengthen black and weaken white that w uh, so this turn is one of them this connect is one of them however connect is no good because the two stones will die and uh, this Atari um, you could decide against it um, if you think that this Atari makes you know this exchange uh, somehow makes whites outside stronger um, upon considering this and secondly um, this Atari is very very good uh, very very offensive but it is creating another group for black and so um, maybe we can uh, try to find a more um, you know balanced a relative strength option and um, and then we may have came up with the turn again it's very difficult to without knowing the joseki uh, but uh, the second part where uh, this double honey definitely we could have um, avoided this uh, double atari is uh, we should be able to realize this double atari and so um, uh, when we think of this shape we're like um, okay well i have to fix my double atari secondly i want to attack white and so uh, we may be we may have uh, been able to come up with this connect or this um, extend if we were thinking more in line of the um, you know more on those lines of um, relative strengths uh, another great relative strength move is to crawl up there this would give black one more liberty again this is also sente and um, um, one more liberty uh, you know would matter very much in the corner fight so here uh, this is another um, this is a fight that um, you know some of us know this joseki some of us do not know this joseki um, this is a complicated fight um, so even if we do know um, what the joseki moves are there are other moves in this area so that we don't quite know what's going on we don't quite know if the normal joseki is good or if um, you know uh, or if we have something better or worse than the normal joseki uh, so here it's very important to realize uh, to uh, remember relative strength really matters and um, try to make your moves um, when when operating under uncertainty try to operate in a way that both make yourself stronger and also make your opponent weaker at the same time um, so um, a, a very good one would have been uh, this uh, crawling move um, remember back with the other two games uh, in the review uh, the value of sente is extremely important so um, having this move that strengthens yourself in sente is very very well uh, well sought after very very valuable um, so uh, maybe we could have came up with this and then maybe we could have came up with a connect um, for next time okay Lastly, uh, don't give up so early in the game. Um, you know, a couple of moves, um, a couple of good fights, and we can uh, easily come back into the game. Um, okay, so um, um, yeah, yeah. Um, I think uh, we had a very um, interesting set of games uh, this time. Uh, we went through them rather quickly, uh, but um, you know. We did see many examples um, of our uh, main idea at play. Uh, very, very, uh, very important to um, to have sente in the early game. Extremely important to have sente in the mid game. And um, whenever you can, you know, strengthen yourself in sente, um, uh, you know, make some territory in sente, do whatever in sente. We prefer sente over gote. Uh, it is 
uh, one of the most sought after resources on the Go board. And um, when we're in doubt, um, try to play moves that are very strong in terms of relative strengths, not only um, you know one you know not only one idea moves which are attack or defense kind of moves. Um, all right, um, try to try to do more, uh, try to do more rather than less, and remember, um, playing slower and safer may not actually be safer. As the first game, this game showed, um, this game playing two very safe but slow moves from white allowed black to get a very large moyo, and then when white went into the moyo, um, the group died in the end. So um, um, yeah, so so playing safe and slow is not necessarily safer. It actually might be um, more dangerous. Um, so. Try to get Sentes, uh, if only to have this extra move where you can further defend your, you know, other weaknesses. Um, and uh, remember, during the fight, uh, relative strength is extremely important. In the first game, uh, some of some uh, very good examples where um, the way that Black attacked this uh, left-hand side white group probably had many different ways to attack, but the um, this one and then this honey move is a very were very good examples of relative strengths and um, um, see this move is making white's corner weaker and making black's side much stronger and uh, this is that uh, this is what allowed black to later um, you know you know have that extra move to come to go for the capture um, second game we saw a very similar um, a very similar um, um, thing when white connected here on the first line white lost a very crucial sente in the middle game and um, let's just say that uh, uh, you can't lose too much too many uh, before uh, before your time is up so make sure we play these uh, sente moves whenever we can fight for the sente and um, um, when the fighting gets complex uh, remember back to uh, Joseki uh, concepts that we uh, be we first learned in Joseki, which is um, relative strengths. Um, you are safe if your opponent is even weaker than you are, and um, um, you you can only capture your opponent if you are not captured yourself. Uh, okay, um, we went through today uh, rather quickly. Um, um, Sounds good. Hope you guys can take something good um, um, from this. And um, um, good luck to all NAOL participants for the uh, next week on the next round. And um, see you guys next time.